when war broke out in 1914, there was, in Scotland as elsewhere in the UK, an outbreak of patriotic fervour. Thousands rushed to sign up. It was said that in Glasgow alone, 6,000 men signed up in the first couple of days. But for every action, a reaction. And so, in Scotland, was built an anti-war movement of real clout. Anti-war sentiment swelled in the days around the declaration of conflict. There were over 100 protest meetings across Scotland, from Ayr to Fraserburgh. The movement was led by men like Willie Gallagher and John McLean, both of whom spent time in prison for their convictions against war. But as strong and important as they were, more important were the women crusaders of the peace movement. They maintained the anti-war stance throughout the war and their own gatherings garnered up to 15,000 people on the streets of Glasgow. Protests continued for the duration of World War I across Scotland. Here in Aberdeen, a gathering in the Music Hall saw angry patriots gather outside to attack anti-war campaigners inside. What they didn't reckon upon was that many of the anti-war protesters were very talented boxers. Perhaps the greatest protest of all, though, was the refusal to fight. There were in Scotland more than 1,000 conscientious objectors. They refused to join up on the grounds of politics, religion, or their own humanitarianism. What I have in front of me is various records from the collection held in Glasgow City Archives, and that collection relates to the South West Regional Board for conscientious objectors during World War II. Various lists of delegates um, to meetings of the conscientious objectors groups. The first one here is the Scottish Central Board, and what it does is list all the organisations attending that meeting. We have the No Conscription League, We've got various religious organisations, so we've got the Society of Friends and we have the Church of Scotland Peace Society um, and then also we have a number of women's groups and we, here we have a membership card. Um, this was a group of conscientious objectors and obviously its aim was to encourage a, a spirit of fellowship, hence the name, um, between conscientious objectors and to provide a means of such fellowship. So this was a place in an organisation that could get together with each other and support each other. Um, and it tells you one of its aims is to promote understanding and cooperation between peoples in an endeavour to break down the false political, religious and economic barriers that make them the victims of periodical conflicts. We're close to Aberdeen Airport. This land now is used as a long-stay car park. But in the summer of 1916, 250 conscientious objectors were sent here. By day, they worked 10-hour shifts, breaking up this stuff, granite. By night, they lived in leaky tents and slept on straw mattresses. In early September, 70 of them were declared unfit to work due to the conditions. Then one of them, young Walter Roberts from Stockport, died of pneumonia. The death caused outrage within the camp. There was a letter writing campaign. Future Labour Prime Minister Ramsay MacDonald visited. Then suddenly, in the middle of October, Dice Camp was declared unfit and closed the conscientious objectors were sent elsewhere. <laughs> 